Hello, this is Thomas Alts, Wind and Change TV. I just finished the workshop in the building over there and I wanted to address or use the opportunity to speak from the heart um, about this week's topic, which is keynotes. Um, why keynotes? What, how can it help you if you have a conference coming up? And there's a very specific example that triggers me to talk into the camera today. Um, we had a proposal out there for a company that is planning a um, regional meeting. It will be 100 participants taking place in six weeks from now. And we had the inquiry last week um, if we could help. They were looking for a keynote speaker to um, have a highlight in this event. We did our proposal and I just spoke to the decision maker in the lunch break. And the answer was that they've decided to um, not go for an external speaker because the agenda was getting more and more um, filled up. So the slot that was planned after lunch was about to be diminished. We had about an hour after lunch. It was the idea to be an energizer for the conference. And now the decision is um, they won't have anyone. Now, I have to tolerate that decision. It's not my place to give a judgment, but I want to ask you some questions. And if you are the decision maker planning the next conference, ask yourself. What do you want to achieve on that day? The 100 participants or ma however many it may be, what do they come for? Um, how can you make sure that it, the agenda is not too packed, that it's not information overflow? I've seen so many events and I've spoken to decision makers afterwards about their latest event. Very often it is too much information driven. It is very full the agenda. Also, they don't plan for buffer time, so naturally the agenda runs behind. And it's just input, 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 input. Um, people, as a feedback, sometimes wish for more interaction, room to contribute, controversial discussions, activities. And yet, very often, they are doomed um, to stay in their seats, listen carefully, pay attention which is not the best script for a powerful conference, for a meeting that basically lifts the spirit of the workforce. It's not. You can learn a lot from um, professional events that are run by agencies. How do they structure it? How much input is there? How much do they sometimes cut back on the amount of presentations, the lengths of the presentations, the numbers of the PowerPoint slides, reducing, 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 to find that extra space that delegates, participants have a chance to experience something, to make uh, it also fun to be there, to create excitement. We've got a lot of recipes um, to do that. Now, for instance, Ask yourself also in that particular, when was the last conference and the one before in your business unit, in your business area? And what was the agenda of the last event and the one before? Very often they are all the same. They're very packed, info-driven. Info I understand that you need to inform while everyone is there. The bottom message still remains. Do not overload your conferences. Um, the intention is understandable, but the people will not be grateful for it. They can only take in so much. It's a nice atmosphere. The day is closing down. I will now go um, to the restaurant and have dinner with my workshop group. And I wish you a great evening as well. Thank you very much. Bye bye.